Hello and let's talk about the Women's T20 Challenge Final that's being held today. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's no surprise because this tournament, which is presumably the women's version of the IPL, has only four matches, including the one today. The final that's being held today will see the Supernovas play the Trailblazers. Now, these teams clearly don't have cities associated with them, unlike the IPL. In addition to the two finalists, there was a grand total of one more team, Velocity. The tournament started on November 4th and ends today. Now, it's no surprise that women's sport is not given the best treatment by administrators in India. But this is cricket and we have the BCCI, which is one of the richest bodies in the world when it comes to sports. Yet, while the IPL has stretched on for close to 60 matches with a lot of media attention, a lot of commentary, the women's tournament is nowhere close to the picture. And do remember, India was a finalist in the T20 Women's World Cup held in February and March this year. So, what explains this kind of treatment? We talked to NewsClick's Leslie Xavier to find out more. So, Leslie, today is the final of the Women's T20 Challenge, which is technically the equivalent to the IPL for women's cricket in India. But uh, this series only has four matches. There's not been too much uh, hype around it. On the other hand, we've seen how the IPL has been going on for so many days. Now it's almost 60 matches. And so what is the reason that the women's tournament has got such a short ship, so to speak, or it's been really neglected? It's always been neglected. So a couple of years back when BCCI suddenly had this uh, noble brainwave that they should also push the women's game, uh, it was a one-off match. And then slowly, I would say that four matches compared to one match a couple of years back, that's an improvement. But uh, it's always been a challenge. The name suggests so, women's T20 challenge. It's always been a challenge for women's game in cricket, in football, in any of these professional sports that you, that you take. I mean... Of course, across the world also, there are issues, but then many of these leagues, like for instance, England and football, they have all started pushing the women's game in a right. much much better way. But uh, in India, it's always been a challenge. And BCCI has had a slightly, I mean, it's it's very clear. It's almost like an afterthought mm -hmm. after this tournament is, is being organized, though they claim otherwise. So, uh, what is happening, what is, in, uh, what, what is the first grouse that uh, one gets to have when we look at this is that when it comes to the women's game, suddenly the discussion revolves around feasibility and uh, financial viability, etc. When the men's game, there is no discussion at all. And, uh, and as a federation, as a uh, governing body for the sport, your primary goal is, uh, of course, to ensure that the game has an all-round development, right from the grassroots to to the highest level across the gender divide. Right. So, in that regard, it's 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 been lopsided development of cricket in India. And again, the comparison directly has to be made with the top three countries that way. Because India is the, as far as cricketing stature and money is concerned, India is the biggest cricketing nation in the world. And of course, England and Australia, the Australia. other two big right. nations, and Australia, the Big Bash League is is the biggest league in the world for women. There is a women's Big Bash League, and uh, it's it's a full season. And a few of our Indian players have played also. Someone like Arman Preet, for instance, who is captain of one of the sides in the mm -hmm. uh, women's T20 IPL Women's T20 Challenge. So uh, compared to those, BCCI is is, is like a stone age away. They are still in the stone ages that way, and right. uh, and still they discuss about uh, viability, feasibility, and all that. And uh, in fact, just yesterday, the board president uh, sort of Gangli was quoted as saying that uh, in a couple of years' time, we will have a women's league on par with the men's league with seven to eight teams, and it's going to be big after that, and all that. So it's great if it happens like that, but uh, the the larger point is that at the moment, at, at present, what are you doing for the game? Because as far as I see, as, as far as everybody can see, the women have not played a single game right. until last week since uh, since their World Cup. That was that was early this year, mm -hmm. January Feb, and. Uh, uh, their domestic season went for a toss. Whatever the small tournaments that they had went for the toss because of the pandemic. Uh, no international tours, no international matches, fixtures, everything is cancelled. While the men's team is going to travel after the IPL to Australia for the series. 
Right. And but nothing is planned for the women this year, nor early part of next year. And these four matches are the only matches that the women are getting this year. The best part of this year that almost ten months they are getting four matches. So what are you doing for the? What is the board doing for the women's game this year at the present? You talk grand plans about two years later, right? But at present, the way things have been handled for the women's side of the game, it so happens that it is going to pull back. the women's game for uh, the little growth that is it, it has had in the last 4 5 years Absolutely. and i i speak about 4 5 years because that is exactly when the women's game was treated in a slightly better way because before that it was more arbitrary suddenly when the tournament or a bilateral series happened right. the team is convened the coaches and the managers are got in they have given a contract for the tournament not for the duration like the men's there was no central contract that started recently two years three years back and so women's game has taken baby steps into some semblance of i mean existence that way in a professional setup uh, only recently and if uh, with with the kind of apathy or with the kind of uh, short sighted approach that the bcci is managing this uh, it would have a long term impact as well because this this we are talking about the elite players not getting a chance to play but Absolutely. then that what happens down the what happens the, down yeah. down is is much more much more worse so right. that's that's uh, the, that's the whole point that you are just giving the women chance to play four matches in a year so how how unfair is that absolutely and the key question of course like you said is that the bcci is flush with money so it's not even a issue of resources for that matter it's just a issue of priorities exactly so uh, as far as revenue is concerned of course bbci bcci is uh, as ensured that this year also i mean even if, even if the ipl was not conducted they would have gotten the money and it wouldn't have been a i mean uh, they would have been some dent but it wouldn't have been a loss at all but with, with the ipl being staged and of course there were there has been tv audience and uh, people have been following so right across the world because cricket action has been less any sporting action for that matter has been less this year because people want to consume people want to watch the matches so uh, money has come in for sure and uh, if you conduct a tournament being being a board if you acting as a board rather than a business entity that way full on business entity right. and looking at the larger picture of development of the game because that's what you are supposed to do also then take a hit i mean it's it won't be a hit even a hit when you consider bcci's resources because if you look at bcci's uh, revenue and money and the bcci economy as such it would be larger than many of the indian states some of some of the indian states over here, the kind right. of money that we are talking about so uh, and it's uh, it's not a handout that that's been considered here because this is again a long term plan where the women's game would in the long run become attractive enough to ha- add to the bcci revenue asset but but you can't think about that and not get into it right right because at the start if you say whether it's feasible now or viable now then that becomes a that becomes a stumbling block in itself because as far as game development is concerned you can't develop it overnight be be the men's game also when you when you look at the 80s indian men's team i mean it was not exactly a revenue spinner that way and uh, 90s the explosion happened and the slow and slowly and steadily bcci grew grew in stature so did the uh, indian cricket scene right and it it took it took a good part of 20, uh, 20 years two decades to achieve that and imagine if early 90s uh, who was at the helm jagmohan dalmia plus uh, I S Bindra. Imagine if they had thought that uh, let's not push the national team that much. Uh, I don't think it's it's financially viable. Right. Because at that point they were paying the Doordarshan to broadcast the matches. It was the other way around. And if if uh, no, we can't pay this much. No, let's not broadcast. Let's let's think about a viability, feasibility. Uh, where would where would a where would the men's team be? Exactly. So that's that's the that's the whole point. Absolutely. And in this context, of course, the men's team is also heading to Australia soon, and uh, there would probably have been collaborations possible in the women's cricket side as well. Yeah, so uh, there have been criticism from Australia, 
Australia, anyways, in the women's cricket side, there have always been a slight tussle between India and uh, Australia. And uh, last year, in fact, uh, when the women's T20 challenge was held, also it coincided with with some tournament that the Australian board had planned. Mm-hmm. But uh, 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 this year also, the tussle was supposedly for the World World Cup T20 World Cup that was happening down under, and. Uh, it was clashing with BCCI's grand plan of staging the IPL right. in the UAE in this this period. This uh, and again uh, the women's big bash, big bash league, and that started late October and is going on till uh, end of November. So it the women's T20 talent, uh, challenge of IPL it's 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 clashing with that calendar. So cricketers from Australia, like for instance Alice. Ely, who is the wicketkeeper batsman of Australia, she has been very vocal uh, on Twitter, criticizing, uh, slightly being sarcastic also. Saying, Great, you conduct the tournament right when the women's big bash league is happening. So why, what that, what does that is such? They completely negated participation of uh, Australian players, and Australian players are some of the best in the world. So in this uh, women's T20 challenge, you have got players from across the world. English players are there, South African are there, some West Indian players are there. And of course, uh, Indians, the the top Indian players. So, uh, but but you also kept away some of the best players of the generation who are playing in the Big Bash League as well. Uh, it could have been easily avoided because the IPL started in September, September uh, second week of September, third week of September. Right. And uh, if at all this uh, women's T20 challenge was staged at the early part of the IPL, because it's such a matter of staging, uh, and the understanding between boards, the discussion had happened with Cricket, Cricket Australia, where maybe you could get some teams or even players to participate mm-hmm. in this thing. So increase the number of teams that are playing in the women's T20 challenge right. and conduct it in a spread out manner. Slightly more matches. I'm not saying that conduct the matches on par with the men's game, but right. slightly more matches so that our players also get get that match time because that is a big big deal. And uh, then as a as a return favor or as a return day, and there is no favor needed also because there is money at stake here. And you, of course, women's big bash league would have a larger. Uh, stake in the Indian TV audience if Indian players are playing in the book. So they would be interested exactly. in that as well. So so as a return, uh, when the WBBL is starting in October, you send some Indian players there or you send a team which can be as a special case. Because these are unprecedented circumstances and the idea is to give platform and give uh, give a chance for the women's game to True. also play and survive and Slightly nourish under these difficult circumstances. So this could have been easily achieved. It just needed some sporting and business diplomacy from both both the boards, and also a far-sighted vision, and also setting the priorities right. Because now the men's team are traveling to Australia, so why couldn't the women's team? Exactly. So that's 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 a pertinent question. And at the same time, when when you made all the effort to take these players to the UAE, going through the 10-day, 14-day quarantine. And you settle them in, you train them. And then, so if I travel, I'm, I'm my, my hometown is in Kerala. So if I travel to Kerala, so I go through my quarantine and whatever. And then what is my idea? I won't travel back to Delhi fast. I would, right. I, I might, I have gone through this, so might as well stay there longer, right. do some work there, whatever. Uh, same thing, same logic applies here. You've gone through all the effort of taking these players there, and it's just a matter of extending the stay. So, why just four matches? Make it exactly. a double round robin format and give them more chances to play. That is another aspect to this. But exactly. so to these, so uh, it's very clear from all these things that BCCI's idea of staging these four matches, it's, it's just a, I mean, at best, it's a, a PR gimmick and. Uh, I don't see anything beyond that because the larger picture of doing something for the women's game as such, it's it's missing because it's just so frivolous. It's just right. touching the surface. You give them two matches in a year. I mean, technically that way, right? Because three matches in a year. The teams which reach the final get three matches to play. So the players in that 
that's 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 the that's the maximum they get in a year so right. how are you developing the game and uh, also when the men's team have traveled to australia what about the women's international matches exactly of course uh, of course the old picture is different when it comes to the domestic talk because the men's have men's domestic scene has also not been discussed as such so that's that's a whole different scenario i'm not even getting there because that's that's even bleak the picture and winding this i mean cricket is not the only only sport that is doing injustice over here when you look at football right. isl is going to start now on, on the 19th and uh, uh, there's no discussion about the women's team and in football again the same thing on a normal year the indian women's league it's just conducted as an after tour you won't you won't believe it's conducted in the height of summer in north india and the matches are in the day because flag lights add to the coast flag lights are not there so the women play at 2 pm 3 pm in a- april may in north india that that tells you the picture so that's football so yeah uh, Uh, it would it would do well i mean for these boards to just be less frivolous about such things and absolutely. act or just don't put up the act that you are doing something great absolutely right thank you so much lesley for talking to us that's all we have time for today we'll be back tomorrow with more news from the country and the world until then keep watching news click